When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead, oh, where will you be when it sounds? When judgment day is drawing nigh, where shall I be? When God the works of men shall try, where shall I be? When east and west the fire shall roll, where shall I be? How will it be with my poor soul? Where shall I be? Oh, where shall I be when the first trumpet sounds? Oh, where shall I be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead? Oh, where shall I be when it sounds? Oh, where will you be when the first trumpet sounds? Oh, where will you be? When it sounds so loud, when it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead, oh, where will you be when it sounds? When wicked men is wrought shall see, and to the rocks and mountains flee, when hills and mountains flee away, when all the works of men decay, oh, where shall I be? Brethren, where shall I be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead, oh, where shall I be when it sounds? Oh, where will you be? Oh, where will you be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead. Oh, where will you be when it sounds? When heaven and earth has some great scroll, where shall I be? Shout from God's angry presence roll. Where shall I be? When all the saints redeemed shall stand. Forever blessed at God's right hand. Oh, where shall I be? Oh, where shall I be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead. Oh, where shall I be when it sounds? Oh, where will you be? Tell me where will you be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead. Oh, where will you be when it sounds? All trouble done, all conflict past. And oh, Napoleon slain at last. When Christ shall reign from shore to shore. And peace abide forevermore. Oh, where shall I be when at the strong pesar? Oh, where shall I be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead. Oh, where shall I be when it sounds? Oh, where will you be when the first trumpet sounds? Oh, where will you be when it sounds so loud? When it sounds so loud as to wake up the dead. Oh, where will you be when it sounds? Oh, where will you be when it sounds? When, when, where will you be when it sounds? Oh, where shall I be? Oh, where will you be when it sucks? In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our gathering together to this kind of solemn assembly. We thank you, Father, because you remind us that history goes as we have planned it and at a time is coming when all things that we see all things that appear good and beautiful and solid 
will all be rolled away and then Christ will reign the new earth the new earth eventually will come father we pray that will prepare us for the coming events in Jesus name that when in reality a trumpet shall sound that those of us who have led the world and have come to the kingdom of God we have left our sins and we have come to the Savior we have left all else behind to enthrone Jesus Christ in our hearts, in our lives. Father, we pray, we'll not be left behind in Jesus' name. We pray, o Lord, that none of us will be ignorant of the things our plan will take place according to your word. That this day, as we come together to consider this important subject, you will open our eyes of understanding. We will see what you want us to see. And we pray that the impact it has or, or already on us will never fade out, will never die out from us in Jesus' name. But we'll live carefully as people that expect their Lord to come anytime. Father, we pray that as we look into the Word, you grant us the enlightenment from the Spirit of God Himself, that we will not remain ignorant in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Matthew chapter 24, and reading from verse 3. And as they sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Obviously, the disciples believed there was some, that there were some important strategic events in God's own timetable that will be taking place. And they knew that the only source to know the truth about these events will be Christ, the King of glory. Christ the way, the truth and the life, the one that is the complete personification of the truth. And he knows the truth through and through. No error in whatever he says. Obviously, as Old Testament students themselves, those who have known the law of God, and those who have read, and those who have had interpretation of much of the old testament they knew that there were some events prophesied from the pentateuch that means from genesis to deuteronomy not to leave that in the psalms that they sang very often they knew that there were events concerning the coming of christ that is the second coming and also the end of the age and as they have heard much of the time reference to isaiah reference to jeremiah or jeremiah the prophet reference to the other prophets too to daniel they would have known that there was coming some events which they wanted to know about very well and so we are told the disciples came unto christ privately they knew that this was not something public perhaps erot Caiaphas and the Jewish population at large will not even be interested in such a thing. And this wasn't something public they wanted the Lord to tell everybody. Because these disciples came and they said, for our own good, for our own preparation, for our own knowledge, for our own equipping, for what you are preparing us for, can you tell us? when shall these things be the things they refer to those are the things that related to the jewish people the temple jerusalem and a lot of things surrounding them but it is top there they said they also wanted to know what shall be the sign of thy coming the sign of thy coming no doubt they knew that Enough things were happening 
that he knew that he was going away and he was going to go through the cross through calvary but they knew that a time will come when he had to come again so they said as we are living now and we know you are coming back we know that from the old testament we know that from a lot of the parables you told you are definitely coming back but what are the signs of your coming not to leave that as you come we know that it's not going to end there we know that this age and this world and everything can be that can be seen we know everything is going to come to an end so they said when shall be the end of the world if they needed to know we need to know the events that were referred to as the latter day events in first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 for i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that he sorrow not even as others which have no hope here Paul the Apostle tells the Thessalonian believers, Christians, that he didn't want them to be ignorant. And so the Christian today, the follower of Christ today, should not be ignorant of the things that are going to happen. That's why we count it very important to speak on this subject, the Christian and the latter day events. The prophetic word of God has a lot to say concerning the last days. Jesus Christ himself, the head of the church, alerted his people and is still alerting us today and warning today of the conditions in the last days. When warnings are neglected, you're old enough to know that we suffer the consequence. These are days to watch and days to pray and days to walk prayerfully and carefully before the Lord. We're nearer the end than we realize. And we're called upon to learn lessons from past generations and from the present realities in our world. Because of the general ignorance concerning the latter day events what i will first do in an introductory manner is to go through a series of scriptures in order the way the bible puts them how these things will happen that is a christian a child of god he looks he stands right now at the edge of history and he looks afar and then he borrows, he gets from the Lord, a kind of spiritual prophetic telescope so that he can see events as they follow in succession. What will he see? If you were to see spiritually and you realize that this is exactly what happened to every person that the Lord had called almost. Because you see God calling Abraham made him to be able to look afar and look ahead at the things that will happen it's like giving him a kind of heavenly telescope and say from where you stand this will happen this will happen that will happen lined up in succession isn't that what you'll find in joseph that he told the children of israel before he died at the end of genesis he said the lord will surely visit you and when the Lord visits you and takes you away from this place, you will take my bones out of the land of Egypt. Even my bones, my dead bones will not remain in a strange land. How did Joseph know? Oh, because he yeah, had the spiritual telescope we're talking about. And he looked up. You think, you think about Jacob. And here Jacob lied, all his children together. He was about to go. And then he began to tell them from Reuben to Simeon to uh, all the others. And he began to tell them the things that will be happening. How did Jacob know? Oh, because he had their sight, insight and the spiritual sight into the things that will take place. And then you think about Moses just before he left. And he got all the children of Israel together. And then he began to tell them the things that will happen. He even taught them in a song. 
If you read determined, there's no time to read that now. From chapter 32, you will see how he relates to them, relates to them, relates to them. And it says, these are the various things that will take place. And eventually you come to those great prophets of the Old Testament. A prophet like Isaiah. And you can see how he traces how Jesus Christ will be born. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And then he even goes beyond that. Not just a baby in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem. And not just a son at river jordan my beloved son but then he goes up far to the point when the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the everlasting father the prince of peace he even came to the position where he will reign you think of daniel and here was daniel in a strange land and this daniel in a strange land god gave him the uh, gift of interpreting dreams and nebuchadnezzar arched this dream and this was a great image of gold, of brass, of iron and clay. And here came a stone almost from nowhere with an invisible hand and struck on that thing. And then he said that stone became a great mountain that occupied the whole earth. And he says, Daniel, can you stand here? And put on that telescope that only you, because of the Spirit of God in you, only you can see. And we, the Chaldeans and the wise men and the magicians and Nebuchadnezzar himself, could not see. And here Daniel stood. And he began to say how the empire, the Grecian empire, the Middle Persian empire, and the Romans and everything will come. And he lined everything up and eventually he said, there's coming the king of kings. That is going to take over everything eventually and is going to reign over all things. And then as you look at all those people I've been telling you now, how God favored them. And he gave them this kind of telescope that they could see afar off. And here we stand today. And we even stand at an advantage. Because with all that Isaiah saw, with all that Abraham knew, with all that Jacob perceived, and with all that Joseph understood, and with all that Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Hosea, and Malachi, with everything that they saw, there was still, notice this word, a mystery. And that's why Paul the Apostle eventually came and he said, Corinthians, behold, I show you a mystery. Their telescopes did not see far enough. And here we are, we stand here, and we look afar off, and we ask ourselves, what are the things in detail that will be taking place as you start from here? What's the next event the church is expecting? After that event has taken place, what's the next we're expecting? After that, what's the next thing until the final thing will take place? So then, just uh, follow through. I just show you a verse after verse. Not, um, you know, I will, I will tell you the points and the message later, but it's just a general introduction to the events that will be taking place. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Reading from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Here Paul the Apostle says, Corinthians, it's a mystery. They didn't know this detail before. They didn't see this before. This one had been hidden away from a lot of people in many generations before. But now I reveal, I open up, I uncover, I manifest to you. I reveal, I show unto you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. When he said we shall not all sleep, what did he imply? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Those references I've read to you now, they speak about the rapture. That is a time when it says, we shall be cut off. The dead will be raised incorruptible. And then those who are alive, and alive in Christ, and the children of God, they will be caught up to meet those raised, uh, resurrected people, to meet them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. After the rapture, and the church had been taken away, what will be happening where we have gone? Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And it says unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And it says unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Let there be no doubt in your heart that God is going to collect all the believers, all the saints, all the children of God that ever lived. And a time is coming when the table will be set before them, not here but over there, up above. And it is called the marriage supper of the Lamb. You saw it yourself there. Now as the children of God are up and they are partaking in the marriage supper of the Lamb, what will be taking place here in the world? That's the next event you want to think about. The thing that will be taking place here in the world is Second Thessalonians chapter 2. While you're opening that, just hear that remember that the church is the salt of the earth. The church is the light of the world. And at the time of the rapture, all the salt, all the light is taken away. If you know anything about the history or the language of the Jewish people, they counted two things very important. One, they counted salt very important. In fact, you know, they counted salt very important in the days of the Jewish people. That the, Ro the Roman soldiers, do you know how they were paid? The salary they were paid, they were paid with salt. That's where you get the, well, that's where you get the language when you say somebody is not worth a salt. It's not worth the esteem. It's not worth the kind of promotion, the exaltation. It's not worth the kind of reward you are trying to give to him. It's not worth his salt. It came from the time of those Roman people that they counted salt so very important that they will pay those people salt. Not only that they count, they counted the sun and the rays of the sun as very, very important. Two things, salt and light. And these two things they counted very important. Jesus Christ, looking at the church and looking at his own disciples, he said, ye are the salt of the earth. And the very next verse, he says, you are the light of the world. And I've just told you now that at the time of the rapture, the church is gone. The salt is taken away. And the light is taken away. When the salt of this earth has been taken away in the rapture, and the light of this world has been withdrawn in the rapture, what will be happening in the world below? Well, you know everything will go sour. No salt. And everything will be darkness and gloom. No light. And that means that after the church has been taken away, there will be something that the Bible calls the, Bible calls the Great Tribulation. And look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters from us, as that day, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. 
the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then, after he has been taken out of the way, shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's talking about the time of the great tribulation. It says the reason why the wrath of God cannot be totally manifested on the whole world right now. The reason why that judgment and that terrible thing that will happen in this world, the reason it cannot happen now is that the church is still here. It says, you know, that he who led, that is, he who hinders the outbreak of the judgment and the wrath and the indignation and the desolation that shall come, that Daniel spoke about. You know what is hindering that now? It says because he who lets is the one that is still letting, that is still hindering. But then he'll be taken out of the way. The church will be taken out of the way. And when the church has been taken away, then you have the great tribulation. And the mystery of iniquity that is, that is still working now, working on, in every nation on earth. At that time it will work without any hindrance. Then the wicked one, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the one that will be the one that is ruling all over the world at that time, at the time of uh, the great tribulation, it will be revealed at such a time. The time of the great tribulation. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 verses 21 and 22. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake for the sake of the jews those days shall be shortened and so after the rapture has taken place the church had been cut up the church had been taken away from this world the salt of the earth withdrawn, the light of the world withdrawn, then there shall be great darkness and great anguish and great suffering, a great tribulation. Then after the great tribulation, verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory that one refers to the advent of christ when he comes to judge you see they knew that in the old testament the old testament talks of the coming of christ when it will render judgment to all these gentile nations the old testament knew about the coming of christ when eventually it will come and clean up things and then it will establish a kingdom of peace Isaiah knew about that and he said even the desert will bloom and he said all the dry places they will bring forth a lot of water and he said all the, the lions and the bear they will eat with the sheep, with the animals. And he said even the little children will play in the holes of serpents. Because all the venomous, all the, poison thing, the poisonous things in them would have been taken away. The Old Testament knew about the coming of the Lord. You know what they didn't know about? They didn't know about the rapture of the church. That one was a mystery. And so some people, they read this, they say the rapture will take place after the great tribulation because it says after the tribulation in those days will the son of man appear. No, that is talking about the appearance when he comes to judge. 
the one that we call that the bible calls the catching away of the saints the catching away of the bride and the catching away of the glorious church not having spot or equal that one is the rapture that one has taken place before the great tribulation well the rapture and the great tribulation then you see all these things that happen here let's now look at revelation chapter one and that time when he comes then all eyes shall see him at the time of the rapture not every eye shall see him he only comes for the saints for the children of god now revelation chapter 1 verse 7 behold he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him at the time of the rapture the church is not going to wail the church is not going to cry it says when he talks about the rapture it says comfort one another with these words a word of comfort it's a word of hope it's a word of joy for the believers that know they're ready at the coming of the lord but now after the great tribulation then you have the coming of the lord and then all the earth will will because of him now in revelation chapter 20 revelation chapter 20 eventually as christ comes and then the end of the great tribulation has taken place i'll still talk about in that in detail later i'm just giving you a general outlook and outline right now then you have this revelation chapter 20 from verse 1 and i saw an angel came down from heaven having the key to the bot of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years do you know there'll be a period of time a thousand years when satan will not go up and down to and fro when satan will not be allowed to have any activity on earth this same earth in which we're living can you think of that no satan no works of satan millennial reign of jesus christ a millennium is a thousand if you have uh, studied arithmetic when you were in primary school and you studied roman numerals you know that when you want to write 10 you use an x when you want to write 50 you use an l when you want to write 100 you use a c c for century when you want to write a thousand you use an m m for millennium and that is where you get it and so here you find that jesus christ will reign for a thousand years and we call that the millennial reign of jesus christ look at verse 3 and cast him into the bottomless pit that is casting satan into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set his seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loose for a little season and so here we find that after the great tribulation then christ comes he appears in great glory and power and then he establishes the millennial reign a thousand years of reign but after that one thousand years of reign something else will happen from verse seven and when the thousand years were expired finished satan shall be loosed out of his prison and he shall go or he shall go out to deceive the nations that are in the four quarters of the earth gog and magog to gather them together to battle and the number of them the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breast of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and they vowed them now after the millennial reign 1000 years of peace 1000 years of plenty and prosperity 1000 years of enjoyment and bliss and and the happiness and 1000 years of not hearing about satan about the works of satan about witchcraft about any of these things tormenting men then satan will be loose for a little season now i want you to realize there's no time and i'm just giving you the outline here now i want you to realize that isaiah tells us that at the time of the millennial reign the person that dies young will die at a hundred years of age that is of those gentle people that jesus was reigning over and that everything will just be available 
everything that has been negative that the cause of genesis chapter 3 has brought upon the earth upon humanity everything has been taken away and there will be a time of great great plenty and prosperity and joy in there for a thousand years and then satan will be loose for a little season uh you see since they have seen the reign of christ they have enjoyed all the plenty and the prosperity and all the venomous things in those animals and wild beasts have been taken away and those one thousand years are just wonderful years you say satan is not going to be able to get anybody well the bible says thousands like the sons of the sand at the seashore they'll gather together to fight against christ the heart of man is deceitful desperately wicked and it doesn't matter how much you take care of people it doesn't matter what conveniences you give people it doesn't matter what provision you make what peace you give them it doesn't matter if you even give your whole self to meet all their needs and there is no need at all at all at all when satan comes if they are not born again they're still going to make trouble you know some of these local churches that are saying our members are making trouble because you know we have a lesson talking on healing we have lesson talking on deliverance our members in our churches they are getting to false doctrine they are running here and there now because you know we have put some kind of embargo on healing and revival and miracle and deliverance and prosperity they say let us release the gift of god for prosperity and for healing and for deliverance so that these people no bad dream no satanic attack nothing at all they say if we do that then we can leave them alone if a false prophet come they're not going to listen if satan comes in temptation they're not going to listen they will listen if they are not born again healing doesn't make a person to be born again deliverance from oppression something working in your body does not make a person to be born again after one thousand years of jesus giving them peace and prosperity and plenty and then satan goes out and he deceives them again the bible says i'll read it to you once again look at it yourself from verse 8 and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners the four quarters of the earth and then it says gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went off on the breast of the earth and come past the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from god out of heaven and devoured them and in verse 10 and the devil which deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever after that was the next event the next event is the great white throne judgment from verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on each from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in them in the books according to their words and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death is the second kind of death the first kind of death is physical death the people know about that these some believers know about and the second kind of death is this final total permanent eternal separation from god and then in verse 15 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment what next then in revelation chapter 21 verse 1 remember satan is now not not only in the bottomless pit now satan is now in the lake of fire and a false prophet and the antichrist and the beast of the time of the great tribulation they have been cast into the lake of fire and a great white throne judgment had now occurred and after that great white throne judgment whosoever was not found written in the book of life all of them that ever lived from the time of adam until that time they have been cast into the lake of fire who are the only people remaining now the people that have their names in the book of life 
Where will they be? Revelation 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband. And so then there will be finally the new heavens and the new earth. That is the general outline. I need to be specific. To be specific, I want to touch on three points. Number one, the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. Number two, the great tribulation after the rapture. The great tribulation after the rapture. Number three, Christians' preparation for Christ's return. Christians' preparation for Christ's return. Number one, the rapture of the church. Already I've read some references to you, but now we need to be very specific and to explain in some more details. The word rapture is, um, was taken from the Latin word. And the Latin word meant being cut off, being translated being taken away and god has not left us without a witness some people might question how can that ever happen because anytime you throw something up it always comes down and so how will it ever be possible that god will just take all the people the dead will rise and then they will be taken away to heaven and not only that we which are alive we shall be changed and then the moment in twinkling of an eye, we shall be cut off and we we'll just go away from this earth and we will not be found again. They say, how can that ever take place? Well, number one, don't you understand? In Luke chapter 1 verse 37, that with God all things, literally all things, all things, with God all things shall be possible, nothing shall be impossible. Luke chapter 1 verse 37, for with God, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Not only that, we know that Enoch experienced exactly that. Long, long ago, as a symbol, as an example, as an indication to the people that might be saying, yes, we know with God all things are possible, with God nothing shall be impossible, but this one is so extraordinary and it's so way out of the line. How will this ever take place? It says, just remember Enoch, and you know that what happened to Enoch is just a symbol, an example, an indication of the time of the rapture when the people will be translated not seeing death. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Not only that, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, two will be enough. We have Elijah. And you know Elijah? Even the sons of the prophets came to Elisha. They said, do you know the Lord is going to take your master from your head today? That he will not die. That this man was so discouraged one day and he said, Lord, it is enough. Take my life. Let me die. I'm not better than any of my fathers. Not knowing that the Lord was preparing a greater sin for him to become symbolic for the church. And then, eventually, you know it happened. I'm sure you read that before. How God took away Elijah without seeing death. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it's confirmed that with God, nothing shall be impossible. Enoch, that's one example. And then we have uh, Elijah, that's another example. I'm sure you will not forget the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, and in verse 9, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. There we have our three examples, and that's enough to confirm the truth that God can do it and he will do it. That a time is coming when the dead in Christ shall rise. A time is coming when we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the air, and then to go and be with the Lord. In John chapter 14. 
John chapter 14 from verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. This is talking about the rapture. This is not talking about the advent of Christ when he will come to judge the world. This is talking about the time when he will come and receive you, the church, unto himself. Receive you unto myself, he said. You see, this is that time when Christ will come. And then those who are children of God, in every nation, anywhere, they will be caught up together with those who have died and those who have been raised from the dead. And then he says, we well, will go to the place he has prepared for us, so that where I am, there ye may be also. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses tell you that uh, we're not going to go to heaven, that we're going to live in this earth and uh, in this earth forever. And I'm still going to read the scriptures to you that the earth they want to live in forever. A time is coming when fire will burn everything. When, where then will they live? When all the stars start falling. When the sun becomes darkened. When the, when the moon turns into blood. And when the whole earth will be burnt away in fervent heat. I wonder where the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to hide. But you know it says when I come. I will, I'm coming for you. And I will take you unto myself. So that where I am. There ye may be also. There ye may be also. And so the rapture will take place. And by the grace of God, we'll be there. Amen. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We have read it before, but now let's look at it closely. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. You know, here are the Corinthian Christians and these canal people and they were worried about non-essentials and they were quarreling about who is this i'm a follower of paul i'm a follower of apollos i'm a follower of Severs. and they were worried about things of no consequence at all it says now let us think spiritual let's lift our eyes beyond the human level and the human plane and it says behold i show you a mystery well, you know, it was saying almost indirectly, the reason you are acting carnally, and the reason you are acting the way you are acting is because you don't see the mystery. You don't know this sin. You don't think about this sin. You don't know at the time when Christ will come, and your mind is not translated, and, trans and your, your heart has not been taken into the third heaven, and you don't even know the things that are going to take place. It says, now behold, I show you a mystery. It said, do you know, we shall not all sleep. And here the, these Corinthians were worried about resurrection, about the people that had died at Corinth. And what are they going to do? Because some of their members had died. And now if we're dying like this, I don't know where, whether I will be the next person to die. Who oh, it says you talk as people that have no hope because you do not know the mystery. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. That is, those who have died, those who have not died, we shall all be changed. Those who have died, they will rise up. They'll be raised from the dead. That's a change. Then they'll be translated out of the earth after they have been raised from the dead. And then we which are alive, we shall be changed. And that time, when the Lord touches your body, it becomes a glorified body. And then you just go away. Then it says, how will that happen? Will it be in a process? That is, uh, you know, God doing it little. But look at this workers' retreat. This is number five. And some weeks ago, we had number one. And then we had number two. And then we had number three. We had number four. We had number five. Is that the way the rapture is going to take place? That, you know, God will decide, okay, where do you start the rapture? Then it starts maybe in America. And when we hear the news that the rapture has taken place in America, it may come to your turn. And then it takes place in Germany. And then maybe a week later, it takes place in Britain. A week later, it takes place in Asia. And then we will, maybe we'll be number five. And, you know, while all those people are regretting in their place, uh, since we have had now, it's taking place in that place before the five, fifth week comes. And then we get ready, it says, no, in a moment of time. All over the world. It's not process. 
It is not week by week. It is not day by day. It's not hour by hour. It says in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, before you have any chance to repent, before you have any chance to make restitution, before you have any chance to reorder your life, before you have any chance to repack your load, before you have any chance to break your link with the devil, before you have any chance to uh, do away with the boyfriend, girlfriend, a moment of time, everything is gone. And here you are, you say, what am I going to do now? Well, the great tribulation will teach you a lesson. Because after the rapture has taken place, the only thing a person can expect in this world will be the great tribulation in a moment, in the tweaking of an eye. And the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we, we which are alive, we shall be changed. And that's why, you know, in that song it say, Oh, what joy, oh, what delight. Should we go without dying? And it says... There will be no sickness. There will be no sadness. And it says there will be no dread and no crying. Cut up together in the clouds to be with our Lord into glory when Jesus receives his own. And it says, oh Lord Jesus, how long? How long? Here we hear that is before we hear the glad shout and the glad song. Christ returneth. Hallelujah. It says amen. Because you know the Lord is coming. And when the Lord comes, all the people that are ready, you know, this, this thing is uh, important enough for you to just take your life into it and say, Lord, come what may, I will not miss the rapture. Because, you know, it doesn't matter who you are now and what you do now. If you miss the rapture, what is the good of it? What, whatever church you attend today, that's not, that's not very the most important thing. And whatever doctrine you believe today, whatever you are doing today, however you qualify yourself today, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm spirit-filled, I'm this, I'm that. Well, the day that is coming will show who is saved and who is sanctified and who is filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, these are days anybody can demonstrate anything and anybody can give any testimony. You know, sometimes you go to some places, you hear some fantastic testimonies that some people give about themselves. You say, what? That this man is so great and this woman is so exalted. Well, it's the day of the rapture. We'll know which of these testimonies are true. And which of these testimonies we can depend upon. When in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, when the dead in Christ shall rise. And we who are real children of God, because you know there's no bribing your way. You, you, you know now that anything you want to do in the world now is all bribery. If you want to enter an institution, it's bribery. If you want to get your child into secondary school, it's bribery. If you want to get contract, it's bribery. If you want to be elected into political office, I'm sure you know, it's money. Everything now, if you, you can buy your way through, and I think that in some denominations too, if they want to be in a particular position, they can bribe their way through. But this is one single thing, that money will fail. And talk of mouth will fail. Testimony, everything will go aside. And the gift and the abilities and the talent, everything will go aside when Christ alone will take the decision as to who is ready, as to who is qualified who is able to go at the time when Christ comes for his own. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and a last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Yes, it will sound. Some people may not hear, but it's going to sound. And some people may be so immersed in the things of the world, marriage, money, all the things of this world. Some people may be so immersed in the pursuits of life, in the cares of life, that they will not hear about the trumpet shall sound. It may be the minority of the people that will hear, but the trumpet shall sound. It may not be all workers in deeper life that will hear the sound of the trumpet. I wish they all heard. But I know this one goes beyond wishing. I wish all members in our local churches, in our villages, and in our towns, I wish everybody were here. But you know, that's just a wish, that's just a desire. And God allows us to have desire, but he knows what he's going to do. Not everyone will hear. 
Only the people that are ready for the coming of the Lord. I mean, the people that are falling and rising today, adultery, tomorrow, repentance. Today, fornication, tomorrow, repentance. Today, it is stealing, tomorrow, repentance. Today, it is fighting and argument and, and quarreling and bitterness. And tomorrow, repentance. These workers retreat repentance. And when we get back home on Sunday and next week, we've gone back into sin again. I mean, it's not everybody that is going to hear the trumpet sound. Not every pastor will hear. Not every preacher will hear. It is only those that are living according to the righteous standard of the word of God. Don't you know the word of God? Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And when he says man, he's talking generally. He's not only talking about the male, he's talking about the women too. No woman shall see the Lord without holiness. Blessed are the pure in heart. Pure in heart. Pure in heart. Pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see the Lord. Look at this verse again. Behold, I show you a mystery. And it says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and they, and we shall be changed. You better prepare so that you'll be counted among those numbers. You see, it's a wonderful thing if you're a wise virgin and you have enough oil and you have that extra oil and you go that extra mile and your heart and head and shoulder and heart and life and mind and will everything in the word of God. You are so saturated with the word of God that you say, I would rather go too far that when I come to meet with the Lord, Jesus would say, you even add extra. That you didn't even need this and this. I prefer to have extra than not to have enough. Some people say, I don't want to go too far. Because, you know, after all, if you go too far and you just punish yourself and you live a sober life, you live a holy life, you live a careful life, maybe God doesn't require all that. Uh, I better have the extra. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Because, you know, those foolish virgins, they add lamp, they add some oil. At the beginning, they add some light. And then they said, well, this is enough. And when they saw the other wise virgins trying to get extra and get extra and get extra so as to be ready by all means, maybe they were just saying, well, you carry things too far. This Christianity that we're all practicing and this thing that we're all doing and we're all virgins after all and we're all waiting for the bridegroom. Then the bridegroom delayed a little bit. And then at midnight, there was a midnight cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And they had been slumbering because of the delay. So they woke up. But you see, a person in the Songs of Solomon, it says, I'm asleep, but my spirit, my heart is awake. Those wise virgins, oh yes, we sleep here. You slept since you came to this worker's retreat. Oh yes, we also dress, like we cover nakedness here we are. We eat too. But you know, it's different. If you look at the army, the soldiers that followed after Gideon, there were two groups. This group drank water. The other group also drank water. But there's a difference. There's a difference. And so they all slumbered. But then they woke up. And when they said the bridegroom cometh, those wise virgins, they trimmed up their lamb. Everything was all right. And then they, when they were about to go in, the foolish virgins discovered what? This is going to disappoint. This experience is not enough. This testimony is not going to carry us through. This light is not going to burn till midnight. And he said, wise virgins, wise virgins, wise virgins, help. Because a light has gone out. Oh, they said, you know where they sell? You know how to pray? You know how to repent? You know how to make right your life? You know the verses of scripture go and buy where they sell. And they went to buy before they came back. The bridegroom had come. The door had been shut. And now they came out, they came and they said, Lord, Lord. They knew the name of the Lord. They were not total strangers. They said, Lord, Lord, open to us. They said, from where are you? I know you not from where you are coming. Why don't you prepare? I know that a time is coming when all this little oil and little moderate salvation and moderate sanctification and moderate experience, when it will not work at all. And so the rapture is going to take place. And the rapture can take place any time from now. And only those who qualify will go at the time of the rapture. Point two. The great tribulation after the rapture. 
the great tribulation after the rapture. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but it shall be saved out of it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But according to the book of Romans, a remnant of the, of the children of Israel shall be saved. In Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12 from verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered one every one that shall be found written in the book here daniel was talking about his own people and he said a time is coming a time of trouble and it says a time that was totally different from what had been before. Now when you read scripture, you need to compare scripture with scripture. And if you read scripture aright, you will not want to be here at the time of the great tribulation. Let me just remind you, brothers and sisters, that the history of the children of Israel has been the history of suffering, and the history of agony, and the history of rejection, and the history of trouble and torment starts from the time of the children of Israel in Egypt. As you start from that time, you will see how they suffered. In fact, God said, I've seen your groaning. I've seen your affliction. Move on from that time and come on to the time they settled in the land of Canaan. And only read, if you are able, the book of the Judges. And see how the Midianites suppress them. How the Philistines oppress them. How the Amalekites oppress them. And see the agony and the torture and the trouble. Move now into the book of the Samuels. And see first book and second book of Samuel. And see the peculiar situation. In which the Philistines put themselves against the children of Israel. Move on to the time of the kings. The time of Elisha. When things were so difficult that even women will kill their children for food. Things were so terrible. And move on now to the time of the exile. When they came to Babylon, in fact they were told that the people, the people that carried us captive, they told us to sing the songs of Zion. And they began to cry. They began to say, how shall we sing the song of the Lord in a strange land? And they said, Jerusalem, if I forget you. Let my hand forget its cunning, and let my tongue forget the language. And then move on to the time of the intertestament period. If you have studied the history of the children of Israel, at a time of the Maccabees, at a time of the great crusade, not the crusade that you understand, but at a time of real suffering. And then move on to the time of the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. How the people suffered. And history tells us that one million and one hundred thousand people were crucified to crosses. And sometimes two, three people were nailed to one cross. And those people suffered. I mean the Jewish people come on to a nearby time now at the time of Hitler. And see how the Jewish people in particular were the target of the hatred of Hitler. How those people suffered. But listen to this. When the Bible talks about the great tribulation. The Bible says all the sufferings of the children of Israel. The great tribulation has no comparison with any of them. Put all the suffering of the thousands of years of the children of Israel together. And compound them into one. It says the great tribulation far outgrows all that kind of suffering. Now here you, here you are today and you'll be hearing about some wars taking place. War in Liberia and war in Somalia and war in Angola. And war in you know, South Africa. 
although it's you know, a little bit uh, different but you know that in south africa there are towns where they just kill this and kill that a lot of things happening and you you've heard about yugoslavia no doubt you've heard in other parts of the world the different kinds of wars that are taking place and the red cross people will like to go and give them food and give them medical aid and they'll bomb the airplane that is taking the food there so the red cross people will not be able to go there again and the thousands of people that are dying every day as we put all these things together the bible says the great tribulation far outgrows anything you hear on the news the great tribulation is not going to be a toy it's not going to be child's play the great tribulation is going to be a time of real terrible suffering the bible says there has never been a time like that before go back to matthew chapter 24. matthew chapter 24 verses 21 and 22. matthew 24 from 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time nor ever shall be nor ever shall be the time of the great tribulation will be the climax the greatest of all sufferings that ever took place on the face of the earth any kind of suffering you've read about before you've heard about before put everything together it's not up to one fraction of the things that will be taking place look at this in matthew chapter 24 from verse 6 and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end that is the end of all things is not yet for nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places was a summary of that part of this message verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows jesus said that is nothing compared to the great tribulation that is still to come immediately after the rapture is the great tribulation the great tribulation is a period of seven years and it is a period of wrath a period of indignation a period of trouble and judgment and desolation and punishment the time of the great tribulation will be a period of great suffering that no one will be able to endure in fact revelation tells us that there are people that will be looking for death and there will be no death to kill them it is a time when the wrath of god and the indignation of the antichrist will combine together and you see there are people that are trying their false hope they're saying well if i don't make the rapture i will make sure that at that time of the great tribulation i will endure whatever will come so that eventually i will have a second chance you know why that is false hope i'll tell you number one right now you have the presence and the encouragement of the church and if at the time you know here we can have conference here we can have retreat here we can have meetings and we can encourage one another and we can pray and we can counsel but at that time of the great tribulation the antichrist will be the one that will be reigning over everything and at that time the antichrist is not going to allow freedom of worship like this i've read it to you already in second thessalonians chapter 2 he will set up himself to be worshipped so then it says uh, how would you say you have hope at that time saying i will try i will endure i will have hope so that at that time i will have second chance number two today we hear messages we receive counsel and encouragement the cassettes are available the literature is available and we're still not able to pray and we're still not able to get right with god and we're still not able to make the rapture if we are not able to make it with all these favorable conditions what will happen at that time there will be no hearing of messages the true prophets of god will have been raptured all the prophets uh, so-called prophets of god preachers of the gospel that will remain at that time you will tell the kind of preachers they are if you don't make the rapture those are the people that will remain after the rapture and how are you going to make it at that time at that time there will be no liberty to worship god and to pray under the rule of the antichrist then number four there will be no prayer support of other believers in a world invaded by much satanic worship and demonic activities and occultic practices oppression affliction and mysterious attacks if now when things are relatively easy if now when we're able to eat 
If now when we're able to come for meetings like this, you are not able to get ready. How will you then prepare when the overflowing of Jordan, spiritually speaking, comes upon the world at that time? Number five, today there are friends, there are supporters who can, you know, encourage you and say, brother, don't get discouraged, keep on moving on. At that time, there will be no friend like that, there will be no supporter like that, because you know what? There will be a council of apostate churches. Those denominations and those churches that they do not, they will not make the rapture. And you, know, you know what some churches do? Any government that comes on the throne, these churches will immediately get together and write a letter of support to whatever government. It doesn't matter whatever government is there. The council of churches will always find a way of saying that, well, we are here, we support you. And when the Antichrist comes to reign, they are posted, they fall in church, they bring their council together at a time of the great tribulation. And they are going to support the one that is there on the throne. And they are the people that will even be checking off. When they make the law that nobody should pray to any Christ and nobody should pray to any God and nobody should read any Bible, that all that is all an old piece of antiquity. Now they are the people, the council of so-called churches at that time, at the time of the great tribulation, they'll be the people to fish you out if you dare read the Bible. If you dare say you are praying, they are the people that will report you. If at this time now we cannot stand, how are you going to stand at such a time? Do you know something? At that time, you will not be able to buy or sell without taking the mark of the beast. And that mark is 666. If you go to the market and say, I want to buy, they say, where is your mark? You say, I have no mark, I'm a Christian, then there's no food. You'll not be able to buy at the supermarket. You'll not be able to buy in any market. You'll not be able to buy anywhere. And your children are crying, mommy, mommy, I need food, I need food. And these children are dying like this. If you don't take the mark, you're not going to be able to buy or sell anything. What are you going to do when your children are dying like that? If you are sending your children to primary school, secondary school, as you operate the educational system, before you get the child to school, they do it even now. They say, where is, your, where is the evidence you have paid your tax? Where is the certificate of this and certificate of that? At that time, they're going to be asking, where is the mark of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast? You say, and the child will say, my daddy has not taken the mark. And mommy has not taken the mark. Because uh, daddy and mommy were deep alive before the time of the rapture. And now they are hoping that they will still be able to make it now. They say, go back home. And your children, no food, no education, nothing, whatever. Because there is no mark. The children are not going to allow you to even rest. And you yourself, you think about you yourself. Here we are at the retreat. If uh, for five hours uh, from morning we have not eaten, you know, we run to the supermarket and say, I cannot hear any message now. I'm so hungry. I think I will faint. Anytime I get hungry, you see my eyes will be turning and everything will just get confused. At that time, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because there will be no food for the people that refuse to take the mark of the beast. Not only that, do you know that the Bible says we don't have enough time. That locusts will come out of the bottomless pit. And when these locusts come out, they will bite people. And the pain will be the pain of the scorpion. It will continue for five months continuously. And no penicillin injection or any other kind of injection will be able to deaden that pain. And people will be crying and rolling on the ground. You, you see how some of our women, and even though we are born again, when they are pregnant and the labor pain takes them, it is a terrible sight. Even though they are born again, they call Jesus, they call my head, they call my grandfather, they call almost everything you can think about. Right now, the grace is still there, the Bible is still there, encouragement is still there, and yet, you know, when this pain comes, you know how they cry at that time, that pain of the locust biting for five months going on continuously. How will you be able to sleep with that pain? And when somebody doesn't sleep for one week, for two weeks, for one month, what happens to the brain? Are you going to be able to pray when the pain is right there? You see our pregnant women today who have this labor pain. You say, sister, trust God. Hey, I trust God, but it's a pain. Their sister called the name of Jesus, 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 but there's a pain. They cannot because of a terrible, excruciating pain. And at that time, when it is the time of the Antichrist reigning, you tell me, you say, well, now I may not be standing right now. I may not be sanctified now, but I know, already I know the Bible. That time, if the rapture happens and I don't make it, at that time, I will try. You will try? Oh, the devil is going to make it hard. The Antichrist is going to make it hard. 
and the locusts are going to make it hard and the mark of the antichrist and the mark of the beast if you don't take it there is no food everything is going to make it hard you know there will be there will be no business for you there will be no employment for you they will not give you anything at all and if you become sick if you go to the hospital and you say i want any help there is no help for those who have not taken the mark of the beast at that time of the great tribulation what are you going to do and not only that there will be serious persecution serious persecution the remnant of the people that remain and they say they are going to carry the bible and they're going to stand on this doctrine on the word of god once delivered unto the saints persecution like had never happened before persecution more than the one you see in the acts of the apostles that they will stone stephen that they will cast peter into prison that they will cast paul and silas into prison intense persecution that the church had never seen the remnant that will say that they will try to stand they will not be able to do it that's why you know when i preach uh, something like this i want to do everything i can read all the references i can that all the people that hear me will get ready because if you are ready now there's no hope if you are not ready now there is no hope but i'm sure that's why you came to this retreat uh, look if the rapture should just take place at the workers retreat after we have had all these messages that are challenging us and cutting us and cleansing us and purging us what a wonderful thing it will be but it may not happen when we are the retreat it may happen after we are finished retreat after we have relaxed after we have loosened our belt after we have gone back to the normal regular things after we have started all the criticisms again after we have started the lukewarmness again, we don't know when the rapture will happen. Oh, if it happened at the time of December retreat, when everybody is just there soaking in the word of God. But it may not happen at that time. The wise virgins and the foolish virgins that went out and left everything, they thought it will happen right now. But then they all slumbered. And it happened at an unexpected time. And Jesus said, watch and pray. For ye know not the hour when your Lord doth come. Let's rise up and pray. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all die. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, we shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and so shall we ever, ever be with the Lord. Are you getting ready? Are you getting ready? Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, because only those pure in heart will see the Lord. We don't know when the Lord will come. Pray that the Lord will help you to be ready. Pray that the Lord will help you to be ready. I hope you don't allow the great tribulation to overtake you here after the church has left, after the church has gone. Are you born again? Or are you still playing with secret sin? Are you hiding your weakness and hiding your frailty? Hiding the evil in your life and the evil in your heart? The praise of men is nothing. People may praise you now. 
thinking you're all in all, you're very good and you're living a righteous life, the praise of man is nothing. Are you sure you'll be ready when the Lord shall come? Are you sure you'll be ready when the Lord will come? Are you sure you'll be ready when the Lord will come? What's the condition of your heart now? What's the condition of your life now? What are the things you are covering all? Not known to man, but known to God. Have you allowed a total change in your life? A total change in your life? A total change in your life? Don't hide behind religion. Don't hide behind the names that people call you. Don't hide behind hypocrisy and pretense. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man is sought. Settle with God. And settle to the point that even when you go back home. You'll be living a righteous life waiting for the time when your Lord will come. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? This is the time to prepare and to be ready. This is the time to prepare and to be ready. Don't allow carelessness again in your life. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Serve him without hypocrisy. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the way you've spoken to us. We thank you because you have not left us in ignorance. 
so that these things will come upon us on our ways. You have warned us in your word. You have challenged us in your word. You have stirred us up through your word so that we will prepare for the coming of our Lord. Father, we pray that these words were spoken to us will never stop to have impact in our lives in Jesus' name. Now that same grace you give to people like Enoch and people like Elijah that in their own generation at their own time even though things around were bad and evil and sinful and corrupt yet you so prepared them that they lived lives that were focused on you alone how we pray that everywhere we go in our homes in our situations and circumstances we will look unto Jesus alone in Jesus name that Lord when there are temptations when there are afflictions when there are situations and circumstances we may not understand that we will not allow any of these things to make us shift our focus our gaze away from the Lord in Jesus name you told us already that as it was in the time of Noah when they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage and they knew not they knew not when the flood came that so shall it be at the coming of the son of man that this world will appear to go on and on people in their normal sinful enjoyment people still in the antagonism to the truth of the word of God people that relish unholy unrighteous things people that continue in carnality that things will go on like that but you have told us to remember Lord's why how we pray oh Lord that will keep us awake spiritually so that that day will not come upon us with surprise in Jesus name you have touched our hearts already we've made a lot of confessions to you already and we know that we've done a lot of cleansing in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our desires, in the inner man. How we pray that the cleansing you have done will remain permanent in Jesus' name. That the purging we have received will remain permanent in Jesus' name. That Lord, whatever it is that makes us to always go back to our vomit, always go back to loose living always go back to carelessness always go back to not watching and not praying always go back to the point that our tanks our lands begin to leak and the oil begins to leak out oh lord we pray you will stop all those things in our lives in jesus name that when the lord will come a glorious day when the trumpet shall sound when the dead in Christ shall rise when true believers real children of God the purified the pure those who are saved, those who are sanctified those who are set apart, those who are spotless when your mighty power will change them and when they will be translated out of this realm, out of this world into the azure above we are praying, O oh Lord, you will count us worthy in Jesus' name. We know the devil will fight. He'll fight the decisions we have taken. He'll fight the commitment we have made. He'll fight the dedication that we have made. He'll fight the vows we have made. He will fight, he will fight everything so that he wants to pull us back. He knows he's not going to go to heaven. And he wants to drag all the people he can drag to hell. He wants to drag them. But Lord, we single out ourselves that we're not going to follow the devil. We will not be lost. That day will not come to us on our ways. We will be ready. Lord, every day we're going to watch. Every day we're going to keep on praying. 
And I will pray that the little, little things that may come our way, the little pebbles and the little stones, the little temptations and the little trials, the little, little things that may pose as danger to hinder us from making it at the time of the rapture. Oh Lord, we pray you will give us the courage, you will give us the faith, you'll give us the determination, you'll give us the discipline, you'll give us a self-denial, you'll give us a sacrificial attitude, you'll give us everything it takes that we will stand, we will not fall in Jesus' name. That Lord, should our dearest friend fall, should the closest person to us change his own decision, although it will be painful, but Lord, we pray, you'll give us the courage to still keep on standing. That even if we'll be like just one Enoch in our whole town, just one Enoch in our own family, just one Enoch in our own area that will make it, we pray that we will make it. That Lord, we will not look back, we will not fall back, we will not get involved with all the carelessness and the frivolity and the sinful situation that people are getting indulged in from in Jesus' name. Keep us watching until that time that none of us will become like Lord's wife.